Hello from the Cannes Film Festival. I'm here with Bollywood actress Sunny Leone. Hey guys, I am here for the very first time at the Cannes Film Festival and my film is being premiered here. It's called Kennedy and my character's name is Charlie. With a following of millions on social media, Sunny Leone fought her way into Bollywood after starting out in adult films and appearing in India's reality show Big Boss. Her police corruption movie Kennedy is premiering in the midnight screening section. So you've been documenting your time so far here in Cannes. What's been um, your most memorable moment so far? I think the most memorable um, moment has been seeing the film in the magazine. <laughs> what they give out to everybody to see which films are going to be here. I think just being here, um, it represents so much more to me um, than just a film that's being represented here. It has so much weight in, for me emotionally. Well, you play Charlie in the film. It's called Kennedy, and it is a police noir. Yes. And it's about a former policeman who's become a hitman, and he's sort of seeking redemption. Yes, he is seeking redemption, <laughs> and then he meets, then he meets me. <laughs> This a really incredible laugh yeah. in the film that apparently is really important for your role. Yes. Can you just do it for us? <laughs> oh my gosh. I think that, you know, when we meet people in life, um, we might know someone like this who hides behind smiles, who, who hides behind a laugh. So that is something that Charlie does, is she hides behind this laugh and um, where she's really going through. Um, so much emotionally. As an actress, you have defied expectations. You started off as an adult film star, then you were in India's, one of India's biggest um, reality TV shows, Big Boss. Then you moved on to making Bollywood films. The Indian film industry has got a reputation for being quite conservative. Was yeah. it hard um, to find your place? Finding my place, yeah, it took a little while. It took um, a lot of persistence and uh, working through a lot of hate or political groups or fanatic groups or people that just want to see you crash and burn. <laughs> and that is the hardest part because you have to continue on with a smile on your face. I have chosen my career paths. I made those decisions. I am not ashamed of those, those choices that I made. That's why this film means so much more. Because after you go through all the crazy and all these people who want to tear you down and watch you burn, and then all of a sudden, Anurag sir calls me and says, our film, the film we made, has you know, been selected for Cannes. You're in disbelief. And I cried for two days straight. And I saw that you're preparing a biopic on your life. So yes, I have a uh, biopic that I've shot uh, two seasons of. And those are all my stories and uh, that got made into this biopic. And then there's also a, a docu um, that, that was also made. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Next to a film starring Oscar-winning French actress Juliette Binoche that's cooking up a store. The Pot Au Feu is filmmaker Tran An Hung's love letter to French food, with Juliette Binoche and Cannes favourite Benoit Magimel playing a couple in 19th century France. It's really a feast for the eyes because top chef Pierre Gagnier prepared all of the dishes and apparently they had to be prized away from the actors in between takes. A Michelin-starred chef gets his first taste of cinema. For the premier, les potages seront un de bisque de pigeon, un de caille. French chef Pierre Gagnère was both an actor and consultant for the latest film, paying tribute to French gastronomy. Even at Cannes, he's never far from the kitchen, and has a good idea why cinema is so fascinated by food. Sight is the first approach to food, and then after we taste. 
There's a pleasure of the eyes, but new film Le Pot au Feu also engages our other senses. The dishes simmer, crackle and steam. Recipes that stir up romantic feelings. It's still a love story. Above all, a love story. This alchemy between the sense and the subject, the way they come together, it makes the film delicious. The romance between filmmakers and food is an eternal one. From comedies like The Wing of a Fi with Louis de Funès to dramas like Babette's Feast and even cartoons like Ratatouille. In La Grande Bouffe, exactly 50 years ago, the orgy of gluttony filmed by Marco Ferreri sent shockwaves through Cannes. Food is universal, and it's cinematic material, aesthetic material. So everyone will use this cinematic tool in their own way to make people hungry, to excite them. French gastronomy remains a timeless star at Cannes. Enticing the jury's appetite. A record number of African films are premiering at this year's Cannes Film Festival, including two in the main competition and four in Uncertain Regard. Congolese Belgian musician Balaji is a force in the music world. Now he's premiering his first feature film, Omen, in the world's most popular film festival. René Lefort and Alison Sargent tell us more about this picturesque multicultural odyssey. Balaji has a unique perspective, and Cannes is eager to see it. After the stage, short films and advertisements, the artistic chameleon is back in the spotlight with his first ever feature, Augure, or Omen. It follows the homecoming of Kofi, considered by his family to be a sorcerer, as he returns from Europe with his future wife, Alice. Bon, je m'en vais ce soir. J'aurais aimé voir papa et... et avoir votre bénédiction pour vivre avec cette femme. Et on va fonder une famille. On va le faire avec ce qu'elle est, avec ce que je suis. Et c'est un peu de vous, de ce pays. Augur is an ensemble, ensemble film. Kofi is the character that brings you into the story. His and Alice's perspectives are interesting, but they're particular because they're able to leave, which isn't the case for the others. His sister and his mother, they have to stay. Augur is both a social drama and a satire of the weight of tradition. The Belgian Congolese director creates a psychedelic world and a maze of colors. I have synesthesia, this sensorial disease where I associate sounds with colors. And so I worked on a sort of soundtrack for Augur. And each character had their own color. When Belogi's not on film sets, he's on the stage, inspired by a Cameroonian icon. I returned to African music a little bit by accident when I heard a sample of Manu Dibango. His next tour is scheduled for 2024. Away from the films and the festival really is the place to be for celebrities and anyone who loves the party. The buzz of the nightlife really is the stuff of legends. Our reporter has been checking out Can By Night. As festival goers await the evening's red carpet procession, Can kicks off another long night with the mesmerizing piano notes of Bashar Mar Khalife. The French Lebanese singer songwriter composed the soundtrack for Banel and Adama from French Senegalese director Ramata Toulaisi. She told me her film was going to be shot in Senegal's Fouta region. She told me about the sand and the wind. The film is a love story. I imagined music that was fairly minimalist, with piano, bass, and chords, a little bit of percussion and vocals. It was about reflecting all of the film's feelings. We wanted to come listen and take a break from the films. I'd already seen Bashar in concert, so I jumped at a chance to see him again. Making electronic beats with acoustic instruments is really magical. Sunset beach walks are a perfect contrast to the wild antics of the night. Do you want to have a good time Excitement as the party gets started, though some are too exclusive to enter, even for French cinema star Romain Duris. 
before a crowd that includes American actress Eva Longoria, French reality star Nabila, and Russian model Irina Shayk, Nigerian rapper Burna Boy tears it up. Followed by French DJ Bob Sinclair. In the words of Persian poet Omar Khayyam, night is perhaps just the eyelid of the day, and some will have trouble reopening for the morning's first film. Just before we go, a tribute to a legendary rock and roll singer who was simply the best. Tina Turner has died age 83. She was here at the festival in 1975 with Ken Russell's film Tommy. She also had a role in George Miller's Mad Max and sang the theme tune for GoldenEye. We'll leave you with some of the reactions to the sad news here in Cannes. Thanks for watching. See you next time. You're simply the best. Better than all the rest. Big wheels keep on turning. Proud Mary keeps on burning. Yeah, rolling, rolling, rolling on the river. Oh! I'm your private dancer. A dancer for money. Na 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 na.